Today we're gonna to set our system up so that we can start creating Android builds. So let's get started. Let's go up to our preference menu. Now for the Mac version, it's under the Unity menu. For Windows, I believe it's under Edit. But when we open up Preferences, come down to External Tools, we got three things here we can set up for Android. Let's get those done today. So luckily, if you don't have these things, Unity gives you a link to them. So I'm gonna start with the JDK. So if we go ahead and click it, it's gonna open up the Java the website. But let's go ahead and take a look. So we want the JDK, so click that. Then again, depending on when you watch this video, the, the layout on the website might be different. But what you're looking for is really just the latest version of the Java development kit. So I'm gonna go ahead, accept the terms, pick the OS that I'm on, and then download it. And then we can close that off. And same thing for the Android SDK. Go ahead, click download. It's gonna bring you over to the Android Studio website. And if you're gonna be doing Android development outside of Unity, maybe you wanna download the whole studio. That's another IDE for you. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna assume you just want the tools so that you can go ahead and build Android builds inside of Unity. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom. At least it is at the time of this video. And we have the links to download the studio, but if we go down, we can grab just the tools. Like we don't have enough of them running around on YouTube, right? <laughs> anyway, go ahead, select the operating system that you're running and download them. And then last, we wanna go ahead and grab the NDK. And when you click download, Unity's gonna run off and download it for you. And I've had a bit of problems with the version it gives me, at least the download it gives me. And if you're having the same problem I had, I wanna head over to the actual link for the NDK and come all the way down to the bottom. Right now, at the time of this video, Unity needs the 10E version. And downloading it from here, I've had no problems. And if we take a look in Unity, the current version that you need, it tells you what version. So in the future, if this happens to change, well, we'll either update the video or, but we'll see what we need to do. All right, so you've got all three of these things downloaded. Let's go ahead and start installing them. Uh, I'm just gonna move this to the side. I might need that later. All right, the first thing I downloaded was the JDK. So just go ahead and install it. It's just Java. Double click it, you're gonna get a little um, install notification. Just run through, install it. I put it in the default location. If you did not, pay attention to where you put it because you're gonna need to put a path to it in Unity. So I'm just gonna quickly close this down. Once you have it installed, come over to the JDK setting, click browse. And if you install it to the default path, Unity is gonna find it for you automatically. If you did not, you want to go ahead and find where you installed it. And then just in the root folder, the home folder, you want to make sure that you can see the, the JRE folder. If you go too deep, Unity will let you know. So at the time of this recording, just make sure you're out, outside of it. Go ahead. And when you click continue, you should be able to see it in the path here. So next, let's do the SDK. Now the SDK, I'm gonna put in a special folder that I've set up for Android. And I'm also gonna put the NDK in there as well. So I'm just gonna copy both over for now. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up the tools first. All right, so I've got the tools done. I'm gonna go ahead, delete that. Now I wanna go ahead and open up the NDK as well. Since I'm here, this one's gonna take a little bit longer, but through the magic of editing, it'll be almost instant. <laughs> Actually, while the NDK is, is installing, let's go ahead and set up the tools. So if we go inside of tool, tools, uh, there's a couple of ways we can do this. I prefer to go into Android first, double click it. Now, if you're on Mac, you're gonna get this warning that, hey, we've downloaded this, you know, is it safe to open? That's fine, open it up. And you're going to get the SDK manager for Android here. By default, it selects the latest version of Android, I believe, yeah, 7.1. But if you're gonna be targeting an older version, go ahead and grab that now. Now the device I'm gonna be playing around with right now, I know I need Android 6.04. So I'm gonna grab that as well. And 
There's a lot of other stuff in here that you might want to go ahead and take a look at. The main thing for right now, at least for our class, is to go ahead and get the Android version for the device that you're working on. If you're working on something that's you know really old, Android 4, grab that. Whatever version your device is running. Uh, let me take a quick look in extras. Nothing there we really need right now. So go ahead, install. I've got 22 items. This will take a while, but that's fine. I'm just select the top one, accept my license, hit install. Then through the magic of editing, <laughs> this one actually will take a while generally, but I'm going to go ahead back into my folder. Now that I've got the NDK installed, uh, take note that we got a lot of other folders here. These folders that are being created are being created through the Android SDK manager. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the, uh, the zip file for the NDK. I'm going to move to the trash. And let's jump back into Unity. We can set up the NDK now. So I'll jump in for the NDK, hit browse, browse to where I've installed it, which was, well, we don't need this anymore, which was game development, SDK, Android, uh, NDK. I believe I got to click into it. Yes, I do. So the NDK is set up. And you, again, you know if it's set up or not because if you select the wrong folder, you get a warning. I don't need to download it again. I just want to pick a different folder. There we go. It's set up. Now I'm going to completely let it download before I go and set up the SDK. And I've gone ahead. I've started a scene here. It's just completely empty. And let's take a talk about how to hook up devices. Because every single device is a little bit different. So you are gonna to have to look up your device. In class, I can come around and help you get some of them hooked up. But generally, for most devices, at least the modern devices, you go ahead and hit the about this device in your menus on your phone seven times. That'll open up the debug mode. And what you're looking for is to be able to enable USB debugging. And I'm gonna quickly hook mine up to my computer. Well, we'll, we'll wait a bit. I'll come back after all of the Android stuff is installed. And we'll continue from there. All right, now that it's done, I'm going to go ahead and close it down. And I'm actually going to quit terminal, but I am going to, well, there's a couple of ways we could do this. But I want to make this super simple, so I'm just going to go ahead and open up another terminal window. And I'll come down here, and you're looking for the ADT. And I'm going to come into the Build Tools folder that it created. Or sorry, Platform Tools. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag the ADB in there. We could go ahead and add it to the system path and everything else, but we don't need a lot of stuff to do here. What I want to do is type in the ADB, then go devices. And it's going to show you all the devices that we have attached. I'm going to go ahead and attach my phone. And with my phone attached, if I go ahead and type the same command again, here it is showing up. Now, like I said before, every phone can be a little bit different. So make sure to take a little bit of time to research how exactly do you get your Android phone hooked up. All right, so I've got one connected. It's being identified. Let's go back into Unity. Yeah, we can close all the windows down. It really doesn't matter now. But I'm gonna hook up the SDK. So I'll just go to where I installed it, which was the SDK, Android. And we'll go ahead, hit choose. Now all of them are set up. So what I'm going to do now is go into my project settings or the, sort of the build settings. Then from there, I want to open up my player settings. There's a couple things here you're going to want to change. One is go ahead and set your bundle identifier and you want it to be in the form of com dot company name cot or sorry, dot and project name. And then come down and select your minimum API level. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and set mine for marshmallow. And there's two tests I'm going to run. One is with Mono 2X, and then the other is IL2CPP. And that's just to test to make sure that I've got the NDK installed properly. So we'll go ahead, we'll do the Mono one first. I'm just going to click Build. Well, I can do Build and Run. It's going to ask me if I want to save it. I'm just going to go straight to the desktop. I'll call this application demo. Even though it's an empty package, it might take a couple seconds to actually go ahead and build everything out. It's going to actually save it to the desktop as well as go ahead and install it onto my phone. Now, of course, if we look down in the gameplay view, we can see that actually there's nothing to it down here. 
It's just an empty scene. Well, you can also tell just by looking at the hierarchy. Now, for those that would like to see a little bit more of Android development, not in class, because we're going to be doing it in class anyway, but for those that are on YouTube watching the video, go, on, go ahead and let me know down below in the comments. And I can throw some more Android development up onto YouTube. All right, so I'll go ahead and add a, a video separate of this. At least of my phone screen. And sure enough, I've got the blank screen showing up on my Android device. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And let's go ahead, go back into project settings, and let's test the IL to CPP. I'm going to hit build and run again, and I'm going to save it as demo. And notice we already have the demo APK. It's just going to overwrite it. That's fine. I'll go ahead, let it build. And for those that are wondering with the IL to CPP, it's just converting it to a C++ project. It's been a while since I've looked it up, but I believe you just get a bit of a performance boost. It takes a little bit longer to build. And I'm not sure if the cloud build supports IL to CPP yet on Android. Well, then again, it really depends on when you're watching this video. If you're into the cloud build stuff and you're just putting this on a local machine just for a couple of quick tests, just go ahead and check the documentation. As far as the warnings go about me getting, uh, could not connect to the cache server, the NAS that I was running my cache server on, I've currently got disconnected, I'm rebuilding it. So it's going to say that probably for the next few days. That has nothing really to do with the Android builds. It's just because I don't have that server up and running right now. All right, anyway, it's done. I've got it running on my phone. Again, I'll put in a little video or something like that somewhere along here. So I've got both of them working. And I'm ready to go ahead and start putting my games on my Android device. Anyway, that's all I wanted to cover in this video, just getting it set up so we can actually install stuff onto our phone. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. And there we go. And we can also go ahead and see it installed if we go to apps. And the mobile demo build right there. I'm just going to go ahead and uninstall it. And done. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. But I'm not walking through a forest. Are being stalked by eagles and falcons, lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>